Hey everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minute. I've been looking at the post, I'm seeing all this stuff happening in various forums, sort of asking, why is it so difficult to work with 3D in x lights? And, and trust me, I was on the ground floor when 3D hit, and Gil Jones, I think, really did a stellar job bringing 3D to the x lights features. This is a game changer. It's been a game changer and forever will be a game changer in how x lights works. Now, a couple things you have to realize is that um, in 3D, you're seeing the visual representation, but the effects are rendering in 2D. Okay, they're not rendering in 3D. It's flattening it out and it's rendering in 2D. Okay, so what are the reasons you would even use 3D? Uh, is it because you want to get that fore aft effect where you see uh, the effects go from the backside of your home to the front, to the yard, and whatnot? Maybe. Uh, maybe it's because you have arches and you want to use camera angles to get them to do different things. Or maybe you have a corner lot or you have a big old fairgrounds to put your show in. All these different things can contribute to why or why you may not want to use 3D. As a sequencer, I think it's pretty nifty. Now, do I use all the camera angles for my sequences that I sell? No, I, I, I don't. Here's the reason why. I would have to have everybody using these sequences have the same camera angles, and that can get a little messy, so I don't use it for that reason. But I do use 3D because I like how my home can look with it and how some of my projects I work on uh, can look with it, okay? There are also props that it makes sense to see this in 3D. Can they work without them being in 3D? Absolutely. Cubes is a huge one, the pixel forest, stakes, uh, things like that, spheres. Uh, you can certainly see how they look better in 3D than you can 2D. But it still works in 2D, right? As I mentioned, it renders in 2D. So let's look at a basic layout here. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of how you get uh, 3D to work in your show. I do want to bring this to your attention that when you do have a 3D model like I have here, and you can move it around front, back side, um, the depressing of the center mouse wheel is going to be your friend big time here. Um, let me explain something here. Uh, a couple things. In the objects, the 3D objects that I'm in, you have grid lines, which you can turn on and off. If you need to see the grid lines, and right now it's not active, if I click active, that's over here on the left side, you can see we have grid lines. And this could be good when you're setting up your show so you know how low or high to put props, things like candy canes, arches, mega trees, your ground coverings. That's a good thing to have there. So I'll leave that turned on for the moment. The mesh is simply the skins and the dimension of the object here, the OBJ file, and that's there. This is also where you can lighten or darken this uh, object, and that is over here in the brightness. Right now it's at 20%, so if I make this 50%, that's a lot brighter, maybe too bright. So I'm going to take it down to 40% and see how, how it looks. Yeah, I'm going to go 30 Okay, that looks good. I just want to be able to see what we're working with here. And I'm going to take it back to the models. Click Save. You have to go back to models or you can't put models on there. Don't stay in the 3D Objects uh, tab button up here. Go back to your models when you're done fiddling with it. All right, there you go. So here is our home. And again, I'm depressing that center mouse button to get it to move the whole object over. And then I'm using the left mouse button to move things around. Down, up, left, right. And if you mess this thing up and it disappears, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't, don't go to the Zoom room. <laughs> this is an easy fix. Right click, reset. There you go. There you go. Now, if you get yourself in a big pickle and you just can't get this thing to show up at all, then maybe head to the Zoom room. And those folks will get you sorted right quick. All right, so here we go. Here is the home. Much like adding props in 2D, it's not too dissimilar in 3D, except uh, things move differently. 
uh, we have different ways to move endpoints. And so I'm going to show these to you as quickly as possible. It is Monday minute, not Monday hour. All right. So if I click on this model right here, the single line, I'm going to click at the bottom and look what it has done. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? I know what to do with that. Delete it. Yes. What in the world happened? See, it's not like 2D. So come back in here, grab it again, click one time, and you see, look, I'm dragging it, and it, it, it's not doing anything. That's not good. What you have to do is you have to drag this arrow up to the point where you want it. Now we have a single line. The problem is it's on the side of the bloody house. <laughs> <laughs> that's not where I drew it, but that's where 3D thinks it's at. So what I'm going to do is select the middle anchor here, and I'm going to drag this forward. And you're going to learn very quickly that you have to zoom in and out often when working with 3D on a home. One of the things that's great about this, since the home looks like it's flat on the ground, is we can right click on any of the models and we can tell this to align to the ground. Okay, so if we go over here to align with ground, which is, happens to be a top item menu, click on that and this now puts this pixel, the bottom pixel, at ground level. This can be your friend, okay? Otherwise, it could be underground. We can also start to finesse this, bring this right into that corner, turn it over, it's still too far out, bring it right in, and then just really get used to zooming in. Oh, maybe too far. And you can see here, it's still further out. There we go. It's looking better, it's looking better. Now, something you may wanna consider uh, is maybe changing the appearance of the dot size from two to four. Uh, this will probably help you. Uh, you can change all this in one click later. Let's get this top section. We're going to move this right up. And there is our first vert. Did this take longer than 2D? Yeah, it sure did. This takes practice. I promise you, it just takes practice. Okay, so we'll click on the outside. So again, the center button is for giving it movement left and right. If you click that center button again, that anchor point, then we can start rotating it left and right and over and back on the axis. And if we click it one more time, that's it. Other models, we get three choices. So let's look at something else. Let's look at working with this and an angle. I'm gonna click on the single strand again, and I'm gonna click right here. Oop. Where did it put it? Where did it put it? If you, oh, look at that, look at that. It's hiding in the house. Now, notice here, I can't see it. So I might have to go look up under the house. Well, there that Dickens is. Okay, great. So upside down, you can grab this and pull it out. There you go, and see it. And you're thinking, okay, well, that's really interesting. What do I wanna do here? Well, I'm just moving the whole thing, right? So let's, let's, and also your arrow keys. If you use your arrow keys, you can move this thing wherever you like. Okay, there's our orbit. And let's take this. And there's, this is so weird, right? Because you just want to take this. Now, all this is doing is dragging this line straight up. But we need this to go at an angle. So while you have that top angle, or I should say that top anchor, pull this over. And now we're starting to get an angle. But is it really going left to right? Let's turn the house. Yeah, it is. That's not bad. Okay. So let's go back here to the center anchor. Scoot this down, scoot this over, it's inside the house again, pull it to us just barely forward. Now notice, um, we can push this up and, and just finesse this into place, right? And I'm going to turn it over here, it's like, okay, that's just on the inside, let's maybe pull. Now I'm going to warn you, if, if you're going to pull forward or backwards, my suggestion is turn the house sideways and then pull it left or right, okay? Now we can take this guy here and we could probably bring it down a little bit this way, bring this down, bring this anchor over a little bit, 
and let's see what we've got. Oh no, oh no, look what we've done. We've moved it outwards. So now we gotta take this. We gotta go back this way, get it to the right angle, then use this key here to go down or up, right? And this one is gonna go back. So get that about center, then down. Okay, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. We'll take this one and we'll go up. And we'll take this and we'll go back just slightly. Double click on the outside. Notice that it looks like this is starting to be in the house a little bit. So we could just bring that top anchor out slightly. Wow. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? It's a lot. I get it. I totally get it. All right, let's put another object on here, something other than verts and eaves. Let's just put a mega tree on here. I'm gonna drag this and just, just drop it. And it's like, wow, that's really tiny. So now we have to go hunt for it. What's it doing out in no man's land? It's like, oh my gosh. So we can grab this handle and we can bring this over. And by the way, every one of these moves that I'm showing you, this is not the only place. Where in the world has my tree gone? Let's right click, align to ground. Let's get it on the ground first. Now it's on the other side of the house. Bring it forward and let's just put you over here. There we go. And notice I'm gonna turn on my side to see where it's at. Now this is, in, my, in all accounts, it's starting to be sort of like a mega mini tree. Let's make this a mega tree. We're gonna resize this object, this, this model. And we do that by clicking in the center. Click here. There's our orbiting, what I call orbiting, uh, around the left, right, up, around, all that good stuff. But instead of moving it, we want to resize it. So we grab this handle, and we grab this handle, and if you turn it on its side, you have another one you can grab to fill it out. And then we can right-click on this, align with ground. There we go. Now we're getting that nah, tree's not very uh, impressive, is it? So let's put 32 of uh, 100. Eh, we don't have to, but we will. There we go. Now we're looking good. Now, if I want to move this, I need to click again and then move this. Fantastic. There we go. Folks, if these videos are helping you out in your journey with x Lights, please smash that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. It helps. All right, back to the tutorial. Now we have a tree in place and it's flat on the ground. And that was that was a bit easier. That was a bit easier. Now I did say a while ago that there are other ways to move these things around. So if you click on the model and you scroll to the very bottom here on the left side, you're gonna see that we have size location. If we open up the Chevron with the size location, you're gonna see that we have an XYZ scale and that we have rotations and uh things that you can play with as far as where they are located on the grid here. Okay, so use them with caution. Um, in the past, there were some issues moving icicles around and sometimes you had to go in here and finesse this to get them because they would flip flop just randomly and it would drive you nuts. So no matter what your frustration may be this year working with 3D, it has no comparison to when it first rolled out and was being tested. So trust me, you've got it easy these days with uh, the way X Lights works with a lot of these features. Gil's done an amazing job uh, updating it and keeping it nice and fresh for us to use. So let's look at another model. Let's just bring in the Rosa Grande. And I, I want to talk to you about this model. And I'm going to try to drag this here. Okay, so it puts it behind the house. Yay, great. This is going to open up the dialog box here for bringing in the Rosa Grande. Rosa Grande, I will do a search for. I'll click search and then just search again and search again until we see it. Rosa, I don't want the arch. I don't want the arch. Click one more time. There's the Rosa Grande and insert model. And there it is. So again, I want to turn my house on the side. I want to bring this back carefully. And obviously this thing looks gigantic on here. And I want to put this as close as I can to the house. This is going to be somewhat realistic. And then I'm going to click again in the center and I'm going to bring this down. I'm just eyeballing this and that looks pretty good. I'm going to click again and there we go. 
So with this model, there are a lot of models, whether they're native or custom, that will work correctly with effects when facing forward. But one of the reasons we use 3D for our homes is because we might have things on the side of the home. So if I wanted to have a Rosa Grande on the side of this wall over here, and we see this all the time. So see, I'm gonna arrow that out a little bit so I can see the anchors. Uh, in this case here, we probably might have this, and let me bring this out just a little bit more. I wanna see all of these anchors. We might want to turn this flat this way, right? This is sort of what you would normally do. You'd put this right up against the wall, maybe not that far. There we go. Uh, maybe that's what you're gonna do. Maybe you're gonna put it up in this little top section up here. But the, I'm gonna caution you, oh, oh, see what it's doing there? See how it likes to hesitate and then freak out? Small little movement sometimes wins the race. Okay, this is great. But when you play your sequences back in X Lights and in your show with effects on that Rosa Grande, it's gonna look as if it's just a single line. It's gonna look horrible. So this is what I suggest you get in the habit of doing. Take this prop that's on the side and rotate this thing just enough. And what I like to do is just bring this out so I can see everything. I want to be able to see all the handles. I'm going to click on this until I can make this rotate on an axis. And if you just get it to rotate about 30 degrees or so, that'll be enough. Then you can scoot this back into place. And if it's in the home a little bit, that's okay. But the idea is X Lights wants to see that model facing out somewhat. Are there other ways to get around this? Um, yeah, I mean, you could look at using shadow models that complicates things. Um, you could look possibly at camera angles, but then that screws up everything for whole house effects. So my suggestion is if you're going to have things on the side of your home uh, to point them out. Now, this is not behaving like this with every single effect. It varies based on the effect. But what I've learned over the years is if you just angle it out, uh, you don't have problems, okay? So something to consider. If you only have a front-facing show, then it doesn't really matter, okay? So that is sort of 3D in a nutshell. Does it take longer than 2D? Absolutely. Um, if you're planning on putting your show in 3D this year and you've, you're used to 2D, you can go ahead and take that 2D and turn it into 3D and maybe move the props around. Uh, my suggestion might be is start over. Uh, and this will give you a lot of practice building your skills in the 3D world. Uh, it's, it's sort of fun and kind of cool. It does take practice and that repetition will make you much better at doing it. And don't forget to experiment with the size, location, numbers here in moving things around. This will help you. You can push the button up this way and just watch what it does. Push the button down. Is it moving? Which way is it going? The scaling, all these things sort of matter uh, to get your show looking just right. But remember, this is just a representation. A lot of us are OCD, so we want it to look exactly the way it's gonna be in our show. But uh, you know, cut yourself a little bit of slack. It's still just a representation. Go out there, get your 3D on, enjoy it. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. This has been Monday Minute. See ya.